Good evening. Today is the 19th of July and it's time for a bit of an unexpected, a slightly shambolic shuffle. This is the White Horse Pub, which is a uh, place called Ampfield, it's near Romsey in Hampshire. And they have what's called the classic and interesting car evening. Now there are some classic cars here, there are some interesting cars here. Um, but are there any interesting classic cars here? Well I think that's probably the case. And we will have a look around and we will see what we can find. I think that's a Series 2 Land Rover as far as I can see. Oh, Escort. Yes, we've got more than one Mark 1 Escort here as well. That's a 73, 74. It's RS2000. That'll be worth, well, it just increased in value as it's driven past the camera. That's all I can say. So we'll start off with this uh, Chevrolet. Now, this looks a very custom looking car. It's a, it's a 41. I don't know anything really about things like this for you. I don't know anything. But we'll look at the interior. Someone's just spent an awful lot of money doing this up. Very, very high standard of workmanship. This won't have the original engine or anything in it, will it? We'll have some, I don't know, maybe an LS V8, something like that in there. Who knows? Um, that colour, though, is, is quite nice. So, uh, not a classic, but an interesting car. 2019 Mazda MX-5 ND. Certainly the sort of car you want on anything like this. 1975-76 Reliant Scimitar GTE. And no, I'm not allowed to say what you think I'm going to say to you is because uh, that phrase in the connection with the Royal Family is banned on this channel. I'm not allowed to say that. We are allowed to say that this, um, <laughs> this um, Scimitar has had an, a, a V8 swap probably a Robo 3.5 litre V8 or something like that. Um, made of fiberglass of course so no rust on the top but um, looking a, a little bit sort of you know less than perfect but it doesn't really matter does it. And we've got this a uh, much earlier MX-5 an NA UK market specification 1997-1998 I think just before they brought the airbags in so quite a late one actually and not, um, not the UNOS badge. It's actually got the pre-98 Mazda badge on it as well. In 98, they changed the badge. Next to it, another quintessential classic car. 1986 Ford Capri 280 Brooklands. And now these are... They're very, very desirable cars indeed now. They're worth sort of in excess of £35,000 for a good one of these. But yes, they weren't actually that desirable when they made them. Oh look, someone's in a J40. <laughs> um, they weren't that desirable when they made them because they took a long time to sell. The last one of these was registered in 1989. But nowadays they are extremely desirable. There we go, Recaro seats, leather trim steering wheel, and uh, yeah, five-speed manual, but again, it's been changed, hasn't it? Someone's also managed to get them um, a radio top of there because it's quite difficult actually to get you know um, standard din um, stereos into a Capri without an adapter 1966 Jaguar Mark 2 3.4 litre that is in really nice condition actually that really nice so we've got the dark red leather interior this one's a manual I wonder if it's had the uh, original Moss 4-speed actually changed for a different one. Sometimes they do. Then another quintessential classic car, Triumph Stag. This one is a manual. The one I drove actually uh, quite recently on the channel was an auto. It was this colour though. It didn't have these wheels. These wheels were actually optional. There were some standard steel wheels that you could get for the Stag, but a lot of people went for the um, kind of alloys like this. And it looks great. That's a Mark II, uh, 75, 7, sorry, 74, 75 plate, that one. And then we have, a, I think this is a, a CLK. And it's got a, uh, it's a cream interior, this one. It's almost beige, not quite. And it's just the uh, CLK 280. I think this is what's called the, ooh, let's get this right, A209 variety, something like that. Morris Minotaur, this is the early 
Morris Thousand. Um, this would be around sort of 1956, something like that. It's, it's got the clap hand wipers in it and things like that. This looks in really nice condition, actually. If this is a, a genuine Torah, if it's uh, you know an early thousand, that'd be worth quite a lot of money, actually. Mini, of course, there's a, there's a couple of minis here this evening. This one's quite a late one. My feeling about this is it's not a keeper. It doesn't look like a solid life effect either. I don't actually know what trim level this, this is. It might be like a Mini 7 or something. It's a Mark 7 Mini anyway. This is the last type made. Um, 97, 98 plate. Then Austin 7. I think this is, um, this is one which is... Uh, from 1920s, it's absolutely tiny, but you know, introduced most ring to many, many people back in the day. I think uh, if it's on a J, this is probably an Land Rover Series 2A. The um, Series 3 came out in 71, 70 to 71 plates. Look at the dash, we'll see actually the, uh, this is a Series 2A, but the Series 3 dash is quite different from this. Although in the Series 3 lightweights they had this dash until the, the mid-1980s. Somebody did actually fit some more comfortable seats there, because the seats in the standard Land Rover are not that comfortable for years. I have driven one and uh, yeah, they're not necessarily the most comfortable. So yes, that's interesting stuff so far, lots of classics. Ford Falcon I think this is, 1965. Falcon Futura, we've seen this before actually. I forget exactly where, but we have seen it. Um, that is in really nice condition, superb. Jaguar E Type Series 1, this is a 3.8. Um, unless someone's taken the 4.8 bad, 4.2 badge off, I think it's a 3.8. I don't think this is like a flat floor, I think this is just a, an early um, Series 1 Roadster. Pre suffix plate, but you know, pre suffix plates were used until about 1965, so uh, who knows? That one's from Essex. Rolls Royce Silver Spirit, I think this is. A spare was the long wheel base version. And oh, with the Rolls Royce of beige leather interiors with wood, I do like nice beige leather interior. A touch of class, yes, indeed. Mm, very nice vinyl roof I think this is probably from the 1980s to look at the dash we've got the uh, it's a GM gearbox in these but yes I mean how, how can you possibly get an even more plush interior than on a Rolls Royce 1978-79 MG Midget 1500 uh, nice colour this dark green I don't this is leather I think this is probably a vinyl interior it's got the uh, some Triumph Toledo type gearbox in it I think this one has the early midgets like the one I drove um, in 2021 which is a 68 didn't have cigarette on first and didn't have a brake servo so they're a bit interesting to drive this one will probably be a bit easier very late Mark 1 Volkswagen Golf uh, GTI 83-84 plate whether this is a campaign I'm not sure someone's put a carbon for the wrap on the roof uh, not sure why Hope, hopefully it's not to hide bad paintwork or anything but it looks very nice actually the Mark II wheels on there are very direct swap and they look pretty good Lancia Delta HF Integrale I assume by the number plate this is the Evo version it looks very much like an Evo 2 they were made until about 1994 I think and that is stunning that these are, these are worth in a condition like this an awful lot of money and they are fantastic. Left hand drive only, of course, of the HF Integrale by the stage, although they did sell them over here. There's a VAT uh, ERF van at the back of there, but um, I don't know anything about that, viewers. Um, we're going to skip that because it might have an engine, but we can't discuss, thanks to the optional emission zone in London and the clean air zones popping up around the country, introduced by the Mayor of London and all his friends. So we shall avoid it and instead talk about this Triumph TR3. This will be from the late 1950s. I think the A came in ooh, about 59, something like that. So it'll be before that. And that's a very nice interior. Look at that. This one's re-trimmed all that. I don't think it's really a rear seat. It's more like a space to put luggage. But it's sort of a biscuit colour, really. Paintwork's beautiful. You know, it's a colour combination of that is, is very, very delicious indeed. 
Then we've got a couple of sort of lower volume British cars. We've got this JBA, and I have heard of these. I think I actually might have seen one of these. Um, probably at the Peter Green show, which was in Chandler's Ford last month. I think this actual car was there. We've got some sort of Ford bits that uh, the door handle things off a of Mark 1 Granada, actually, that one. And from memory, yeah, it's, it's a Falcon, isn't it? And it's for sale. Oh, there we go. Um, so, uh, 07759232688. Uh, two litres, so I think it's two litre Pinto in that. Um, what's that? An S, so seventy seven seventy eight. Those are Volkswagen Beetle rear lamps, aren't they? And then another low-volume British car. This is a Panther uh, with the Cologne 2.8 V6 engine. Again, more Ford sort of base cars, although that door handle looks very familiar. I think we know exactly where that comes from, don't we, viewers? Answer in the comment section below. So Ford bits in this. Um, that looks like a sort of Fiesta Mark II steering column, actually, but 2.8 V6. So it's Kalista, which is uh, the later type of Panther they made like this. This one's an 87. I think Sanyong owned the company by this stage, actually. It was a strange sort of ownership period for them. But that's, um, that's quite interesting. So uh, another Mark I Escort here. Again, another RS2000. I prefer the colour of this one, actually, to be honest. Again, 73, 74 registration. That looks like it's got to be Sunday too, and actually that looks remarkably standard, that one. Again, that's increased in value whilst we've been filming it. Then we have uh, another Mini here. This is from the mid-90s. It's been a Mark VI Mini. Uh, 1994, 1995 registration on this one. It looks like it's got a special edition, but I could be totally wrong. It's got the non-standard sort of wheels on it, and three arch extensions and things. I think you had to... Most of them did have them by this stage. Sensible to keep that uh, bonnet sort of strapped shut like that, I think, and a roof rack to it. It looks older than it is. This one, though. Oh, wow. Uh, it's in really nice condition, actually, that. So, 1990 Ford Escort 1.6 LX. This is a Mark IV. It's one of the very last Mark IVs, actually, because they've changed to the Mark V in 1990 on an H. Um, and it's for sale for um, £6,000. One owner, full service history, uh, 07831107114. But yeah, five speed gearbox in this one. The ALX was actually quite nicely equipped at the time. It wasn't quite the gear, but it was, it was pretty good. This one looks very standard as well, which is, which is nice. I think that's something that's definitely not standard here. This is. Um, Triumph TR8 probably or maybe TR7 V8 I, I can never remember the difference between the two of them so uh, 7607 registration 4 litre engine so definitely not standard that actually I think it was a Ford engine in there rather than the uh, if it was a, a V8 TR7 or TR8 it would have been a Rover 3.5 litre V8 so yes yeah, TR7 V8 I suppose or modified TR7 so it's your 7 V8 and number plate, so who am I to argue? I've driven one of these, but it was only the 2 litre. That's got a lot of different switches, and I think this has been modified for competition, hasn't it? And we've got something else entirely here. Um, again, a low-volume British car. I've never heard of an Onyx, but my suspicion is this is based on a Metro. That looks very much like an A-Series engine in there. I could be wrong about that, but if we look inside, we can see the instruments are straight out of... A, uh, I think that would be something like um, a, a late Mark II match or an early Mark III, um, although it's on an A plate, so maybe the donor car's even older than that. Someone's put beige leather seats in here, which I approve very much. That is a crazy little thing, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. And then we've got more beige leather interior with wood action with this um, Mercedes. W124, or more correctly, an S124, because the S is the uh, estate version or station wagon. Again, same major as my Volvo. It's 1990-1991. I'll have a look at the back and see what trim this actually is. Uh, we've got seven seats. I'm not sure. It is the 230TE, uh, so with the four-cylinder engine.
terribly sorry, viewers. Um, I forgot to put my phone onto aircraft mode and uh, the ensuing message interrupted my filming. I do apologise. Yes, yeah, so uh, local car to the area. Oh, well, Portsmouth plate for many years and then Mercedes-Benz of Langston of Eastley. I mean, we're very near Eastley here. More Mercedes-Benz here. I wonder if the owners know each other or something. I'm not sure. Um, R129 um, SL, this one. Quite a late one, actually, uh, with, you know, the interior like that and uh, the um, sort of headlamps like that. Sorry. So, a P. So, that's, uh, what, 96, 97 on a P. Sorry for your background noise, by the way, view. There's not really an awful lot I can do. It's quite a busy road out there. Um, that looks rather nice. Also rather nice is this Peugeot 205 GTI. This is the 1.6. People kind of just keep sort of debating with themselves whether the 1.6 or 1.9 is better. Um, I don't think it really matters. But, you know, it's just whatever you prefer. So that's an SL500, actually, that one. This has obviously been modified for... Uh, track use uh, in the uh, Peugeot Sport Club UK um, original looking wheels but I think they've been sort of repainted and things it, it looks stunning this actually it looks really nice one thing I've just realised this car's got wind up windows in it um, if you wanted the specification you went for the gentry if you wanted the speed you went for the GTI MGB of course you can't have a, a, a car show in this country without an MGB that's the law uh, this one on an H, so 69 to 70 registration, and um, Surrey plate on this one. And then uh, Jaguar XK150, this will be somewhere between about 1958 and 1961. It's got a bit of patina on it, but look at this interior, isn't that absolutely amazing? I've heard these are a little tricky to drive with a standard manual gearbox in them. Um, I don't mind, I just bought one of these actually. He's having it restored at the moment. More minis, of course. One's, this one I think has, has, has arrived since I've been here. Very early kind of Revival Cooper, 1990-1991 registration. And I think we've actually got the proper seats in here. Yes, we have. There we go. That's what they looked like back in the day. Next, uh, Austin Healy 3000. This is a Mark One, but they came out around 1959. Typical kind of the Viera, this sort of two-tone paint, and oh my gosh, look at this, look at these seats. Now that is a delicious beige interior. If that's leather, that'd be really nice. L leather with piping, and a leather dash as well. Again, I think this is a Moss gearbox, in them, but not the easiest ones to use, but um, there you go, yeah, it's 3,000. Very nice. So 1932, I think this is Armstrong Sidley. Not knowing really anything about the early history of Armstrong Sidley, I really can't tell you much about this other than that it's got a, a fabric sort of um, sort of covered frame on the top. I think this is, and when you look down at the interior, that is really nice. <laughs> that is um, very nice indeed. And then the sinks on the front with this kind of uh, grill that sort of um, comes to a point in the middle. It's twelve. Does that mean it's a twelve horsepower one? I, I don't know sort of things that I wouldn't I wouldn't know I'm afraid 1948 uh, Morris H series E here this is another one this is a sale uh, here we go 07808812296 cars in great condition just had some work done to it six and a half thousand pounds it's amazing how a lot of these older cars can be, can be bought for really not a lot of money when you look at the sort of condition that this is in and how old it is it's um it's crazy i think it's probably because these cars are a little bit hard to drive um i wouldn't personally own something like this it's a little bit difficult for me um mark ii facelift polo a really late one 94 only not know what specification that one is they are very heavy to drive though is that a stuff out to plate on that one as well wow they're really running out of space down here, actually. There's so many cars here tonight. So more along the sort of interesting side of car rather than classic is this Caterham. Super light uh, DVA 250. I don't know what engine would be in that, but I have actually been in one of these, and it was a little bit scary, but sort of wonderful, if that makes sense. Um, they are ridiculously fast. So here's that other RS2000 that we saw earlier on. 
Um, some of you will prefer this colour scheme. I prefer the the, uh, the green green colour scheme. This has actually had a uh, five-speed. It's probably from a Sierra or something. That gearbox, the MT75 gearbox, put in that. Another MGB here. 1970 to 71 registration. It might actually be an Abingdon plate. Maybe that's a, a car that was. Um, Really registered by the Amden factory back in the day. This one's had a couple of extra gauges fitted to it, which as you can see down there. Having recently driven an Aston Martin on a track, I do um, appreciate the sight of something like this. Um, I don't actually know what model this is. I'm really bad on a modern Aston Martin's views. I'm hoping it has a sort of badge or something on the back that can tell me. Uh, ooh, Vantage GT8, excellent. Right, this Ford Thunderbird is leaving. This is, a, I think, an early 90s one. I'm not, not really actually sure. Um, I wouldn't really know. It's got a V8 engine. What specification that is, I haven't a clue. Thunderbird LX, there you go. Um, just let this uh, Polo park up. It's quite a lot of variety, actually, for a little show like this. Another um, Mark One Escort, this one's a Mexico. HO used to be an old Hampshire plate back in the day. Um, it's actually before 1974, and this is before 74. It's a 72-73 uh, plate. Look at those bulging arches on this uh, on this Escort Mark One. It looks kind of angry, <laughs> doesn't it? It looks kind of angry, that one. And then we go down here to see something else that's kind of like... Uh, the Metro will see in a, in a moment. This is a Rover 100, though. Uh, it's a very early one. This would be in 1995. Um, I forget the name of this colour now. I think it's Tahiti Blue, um, from what I can recall. The uh, Rover 100 was launched in in 95, and um, this is a 94-95 uh, plate. So I'm pretty sure it's a 95. Yes, Kensington, lots of them were. Uh, probably with 1.1K series. There's the interior of the uh, Land Rover Series 2, I think we saw earlier, um, where like you have to reach down and kind of sort of <laughs> and kind of move around the gears to actually make any progress in them. And then we've got um, a Subaru Impreza. This is a first generation, once a 98 to 99 registration. I don't know exactly. Um, I don't know exactly how old this is, sort of what specification it is, I don't know how old it is. Um, these ones for the UK weren't known as a STRWRX, they were known as the Turbo 2000 in sort of more standard form, so that just could be one of those. But we've got this uh, very nice Riley, I think this is from the 1930s as far as I know. Riley used to make some beautiful cars, I'm assuming it's from before 1938 if it's part of that register there. It's a really nice colour, isn't it? So there's that, um, there's that polo. Let's have a look at that. It's about, about polos. Um, Mark to face, if you get to 94, it's a boulevard. And these wheels have been changed, which is why it looks a bit more sporty. They actually are off an Audi, those wheels. So I said we have more Metro action coming up. And here we have 1985, 1986 Metro... 1.38 um, L this one is like a lot of metros that came with the standard wheels back in the day the owners changed these to mini like style wheels because it's so much easier to get the tyres for these uh, than the standard steel ones but that actually looks pretty good so it's an Audi RS3 but this one's actually a saloon I'd forgotten they made these. I think this is a current generation one. I could be wrong. Um, I'm not so sort of um, up on these sorts of things, but that looks very, very mean indeed. A couple of uh, Abart 595s here. See these a lot at these sort of events, don't we? I'm sure these owners must know each other. I mean, one's a black one, one's a white one. This one's got a original plate on it, so it's 2019. Uh, these, I think, have gone off sale now in this country. There might be some, like, dealer stock ones around, but overall they have, I think, gone off sale, um, which is a sort of a 
it's kind of like a, it's maybe a shame for some people, but I think they're going to really look to the electric brand as is the way these days. The final things we'll sort of come to is for, yes, I'm, I don't know why my Volvo is attracting so much attention. Maybe it's just it's so rare. I'm not sure. It's got a for sale sign in the window as well because, uh, as you know, it is actually for, a for sale at the moment. Um, it's the first of three shows we take it to this week with a for sale sign in it. And we'll see what happens. So I think this is a Jaguar X. K120, 120 this one is. It, it's it's a, also attracting a lot of interest. Uh, this one this one is um, very nicely appointed. Look at that. Someone's retrimmed the entire interior on this one. That is, um, it's rather nice, actually. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this in the comment below. We might be used to come back next month if my lady wife actually allows me. And uh, we shall see you again soon for more incorrect information.